الصوت واضح يا مرفت؟ الصوت واضح كويس قوي. ااا عنوان المحاضره بتاعتي كرايو بالون ابليشن فور اتش اف ابليشن كليك تايلز انا عمر حاتم مدرس امراض القلب في اسم قلب جمال عين شمس. ااا فيرست كي المنتس ذات وي ار جوينج توك اباوت ار فور بوينتس كراي بالون فيرسس انتيريزمك دراجز ان باركسيسمال اتش اف ابليشن كراي بالون فيرسس ريدي فريكونسي ابليشن ان باركسيسمال اتش اف ابليشن كراي بالون ريجيمنز فيرسس كونتاكت فورس Uh, radio frequency in proximal atrial fibrillation and follow up by implantable loop recorder prior ablation for persistent atrial fibrillation uh, so uh, the first point uh, the cryo balloon versus antiarrhythmic drugs in proximal atrial fibrillation uh, a study by packer uh, et al in 2013 published in jack uh, uh, it was the first trial uh, um, a big trial regarding a cryo balloon Uh, titled Cryoballoon Ablation for pul Pulmonary Veins for Proximal Atrial Fibrillation, uh, and it was conducted in uh, North America and uh, using the Arctic, Arctic Front ba Balloon, which is the first generation cryo balloon. Uh, it's called the STOP AF uh, trial. And here uh, um, it's recruited patients with uh, proximal atrial fibrillation, at least uh, two uh, or more episodes in two months. and randomized uh, 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 two arms with two to one uh, arm with a cryo balloon in 163 patients and uh, the drug uh, arm 82 patients. Uh, then a blanking period of 90 days uh, was uh, left uh, after each therapy, then a follow-up up to 12 months uh, was done. Here a crossover uh, between the two arms was allowed Uh, if uh, failure of treatment was documented. So if patient uh, was on therapy and uh, after 90 days he got AF, this is failure of therapy, so he can cross over to the other arm. And this was baseline characteristics. He, he, the, left, uh, the left atrial uh, diameter is uh, 41, and it was maximum 50. The left uh, ventricular ejection fraction was around 60s in both groups, and uh, it was not allowed below 40. Uh, so um, uh, the three drugs uh, that were used, uh, anti-arrhythmic medications, was the class 1C flicanide and propafenone and class 3 acetaloid. Uh, uh, I'll try to be as, as fast as possible here. Um, again, showing the results. Uh, uh, um, 65 patients, with this around 80% of the drug uh, arm crossed over into the cryo uh, balloon. And here is the demonstration for the uh, first versus the second generation cry balloon. We, we are using now the second generation cry balloon. This is not used, the first generation is not used. And the difference that the second uh, generation, uh, the, hemis the hemisphere, uh, all the hemisphere uh, um, towards the tip uh, delivers the cryotherapy versus only uh, uh, an annular freezing zone in the first uh, generation. And here are the, um, uh, uh, over time, this is uh, the couple of mile curves. This uh, graph, uh, the x-axis is time. The, this is 360, uh, uh, this one year. Here is this one year follow up, plus, plus uh, a few uh, months. And this is a um, success. 100%, we all start 100%, that is freedom of AF. Then any patient that had Uh, um, AF uh, after uh, the blanking period. This is a blank. It's around 90 days. This is not uh, here. This is not. Uh, 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 we we start recording after the blanking period. A patient got recurrence. Uh, this drops the curve. So uh, with uh, these two arms, the first arm this cryo uh, uh, ablation, and this, this arm is uh, drug therapy. And you see, the drug therapy is very uh, uh, low. It's, uh, 7.3 percent only. Uh, with freedom, uh, and uh, the cry balloon is around 70%. Uh, and here's the, the safety outcomes. If you um, uh, the, hear uh, the uh, cry balloon uh, procedure events, that's a complication of the procedure, simply the, like a uh, fusion, um, cardiac fusion, like uh, pulmonary stenosis, pulmonary venous stenosis, uh, um, uh, like obstacle complications, vascular complications. And the AF events is uh, AF complications like um, uh, hospitalization, uh, uh, stroke. So uh, AF complications was 
uh, around 8.5%, and in ablation it was 3.1. And we, if we add these uh, uh, these bars uh, and these bars, we got 8.5 and 6.1 for overall uh, ablation, and they are comparable at uh, PE wave equal 0.69. Uh, and here the complications between, uh, uh, of, of both therapies, of course, uh, the cryoballoon has procedure related and both uh, share with uh, uh, major AF events, that's AF complications. And the conclusion was the STOP AF trial demonstrates that cryoballoon ablation is a safe and, alter and effective alternative to antihydermic medications for treatment of symptomatic process atrial fibrillation. Uh, the next is cryoballoon versus radi radiofrequency ablation. And here we got uh, two studies. For, uh, so what is the outcome of cryoballoon versus the, uh, the then gold standard uh, therapy that's for ablation, that's RF ablation uh, uh, for after PVI for post ablation. And this is, was um, a study by Luke uh, published in circulation in 2015, uh, titled Cryoballoon versus Open Irrigated Frequency Ablation Patients for Post-Metal Fibrillation. So it's prospective randomized controlled and non inferiority uh, um, uh, it's called FIES uh, AF uh, study into design in Europe, mainly in Germany. And here, uh, sample size was uh, 314, and two arms, this was cryo ablation, uh, 156, and 159, the RF uh, arm. And uh, the baseline uh, characteristics was, uh, again, comparable. Um, uh, and the comorbidities. And here, uh, the prior medications, anticoagulation, you see uh, around 75% of both arms was using uh, warfarins uh, mm -hmm. because it, it was conducted uh, like in 2013, 2014. So the NOAC error was still not uh, well developed. You see in Apex is zero. Now the image is uh, different. And um, here's the risk scores, the Chalva score, and the Hasbillet. Most patients had uh, from zero to three Chalva score, and Hasbillet uh, from uh, zero to uh, two. And the, uh, uh, here, uh, CTI ablation was done in 23% um, in uh, RF and 13% uh, uh, in the cryo balloon uh, uh, group. Um, and uh, here uh, the analysis was done in in, on two bases, the intention to treat uh, uh, analysis and the uh, per protocol analysis. And uh, um, uh, for sake of time, uh, the combined endpoint that's uh, free freedom from AF and uh, um, no, no persistent complications was around um, uh, 60 uh, or 70 uh, percent uh, at 12 months. The procedure duration uh, in RF and cry balloon. Cry balloon was uh, uh, less, uh, significantly less than the RF, uh, and the fluoroscopy was comparable between uh, the two uh, modalities. And here's the complications. Uh, the vascular complications was the most common in both, and uh, here's a phrenic nerve palsy occurred in, in exclusively in the cry balloon uh, 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 group, and uh, um, most of them uh, improved after six months and a few after 12 months. And uh, pericardial complications like fusion occurred in the, more in the RF group, but not significantly. So the conclusion was that um, uh, at uh, six and 12 months full up, cry balloon was demonstrated to be non inferior to RF. Uh, and then uh, this uh, randomized control trial uh, by Cook et al. in 2016 published in the New England uh, Journal of Medicine, uh, cry balloon or radio frequency ablation, proximal atrial fibrillation. And uh, here is a scheme demonstrating both, uh, both uh, uh, techniques, as uh, Dr. Ahmed and uh, Dr. Musa uh, said. Uh, this is a, a cry balloon uh, uh, landing on the antrum of the pulmonary vein and the sheave catheter uh, in uh, the uh, ostium collecting PV pulmonary vein potentials. And here's the lasso is uh, at the ostium and the ablation caster, the RF ablation caster is induced lesions uh, outside the lasso. And here I'll, I'll talk about the cry balloon ablation details. Uh, here a bit of lesions uh, were created, uh, temperature around negative 50. Uh, uh, two sizes were, uh, were available in the studies at 28, which we use 
uh, uh, most common and 23, which is not, we didn't use before, but uh, it's uh, present for smaller veins. And two di different generations uh, were used, the first and the second, but more the second. The second is called Arctic Front Advance. That's the advance of the freezing uh, uh, surface area. Uh, and target ablation time was 100 uh, seconds um, for the, uh, for the uh, third generation and 20 to 40. And this is what we use in our spirit at NCHAMS. We use uh, four uh, minutes and sometimes uh, three minutes if uh, the uh, ablation is satisfactory. The different function was monitored by palpation to ablation cycles. Uh, even were tried, that's a freeze, thaw. Uh, that's, uh, thaw is um, the balloon is uh, cool, uh, warmed again and another freeze was done. So it was uh, two, two freeze cycles. And the best line characteristics here were also comparable. This HL diameter was 40 uh, plus minus uh, and the uh, left uh, ventricular ejection fraction again was, I think, you see what I can see it. Uh, yes, it was around again 60 percent. Yes, again 60 percent. Uh, here's the effects and the points uh, in both groups. Here's the uh, radio frequency group was 376, the cry balloon was 374, uh, both are randomized. And uh, the primary effects and the points that is uh, um, uh, that's occurrence, occurrence of atrial uh, uh, arrhythmia was 35 percent. Uh, 35.9% radio frequency and 34.6 the cry balloon. And uh, this P wave is uh, highly significant for non inferiority. That's, uh, they are almost the same. So, this P wave is not for, uh, for similarity, it is for non inferiority. So, it's very significant. And the procedure time again was uh, less in the cry balloon uh, because it's single shock technique. And the fluoroscopy time was higher in the uh, Cry balloon group, and this is consistent with my result, with our results at NCHAMS. Uh, this uh, because um, the RF group you can depend, you can rely on the CD uh, mapping system totally in the navigation of the left atrium, but in the cry balloon we depend on fluoroscopy, especially when optimizing uh, the balloon uh, occlusion to the vein and avoiding leaks. Uh, so um, these are a couple of my curves again. Uh, but but uh, so uh, the, here's uh, the uh, the x-axis is the day since procedures. Here it, it's uh, it's around uh, it reaches here around three years. Uh, Flop. Uh, here's the results are uh, 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 described as a one year. Uh, Flop. Further studies uh, it, it will be it will come now. Now uh, again after a ninety day blanking period, uh, we start a calculation. Uh, you notice here that uh, the, the end point is occurrence of atrial fibrillation. Uh, so here the curve is rising from below. It's, uh, um, uh, yeah. So uh, we start at zero, there is no occurrence of F. And uh, each occurrence, the, curves, uh, the curve uh, jump up. Uh, uh, okay, so to avoid confusion with a couple of minor curves, you can, you can say this is uh, the end point is occurrence of arrhythmia, or you can say the uh, end point is freedom of arrhythmia. That's why the, you sometimes start from zero, and sometimes uh, here drop from 100. Uh, and again, this uh, I said it is, was uh, uh, very significant for non inferiority. Uh, and uh, these complications again were compared. Uh, here the uh, safety end point. Uh, um, we're comparable between the two groups, and the, uh, again, the um, Pulmonary, uh, uh, the, uh, the um, phrenic nerve uh, palsy occurred exclusively in the cry balloon group. And in conclusion, cry balloon was non inferior to the frequency ablation uh, with respect to fixing for the treatment uh, of patient with uh, drug refractory proximity of ablation. Uh, so, what about the intervention rehospitalization, DC, and quality of life? Uh, and this was uh, uh, further uh, analysis for the Fire Eyes trial published by uh, in the same year, the European uh, Heart Journal. And uh, it showed that um, here repeat ablations for RF are uh, more than cryo. Uh, and uh, all cause uh, rehospitalization and cardiovascular rehospitalization are again uh, less in the cryo uh, balloon. Uh, and here the quality of life uh, surveys, this uh, um, short form 12 
both mental and physical, showed comparable uh, results of the quality of life between both uh, procedures at, on, uh, at three years. So conclusion, patients treated with scrap balloon as opposed to radiofrequency uh, ablation, has significantly fewer repeat ablation, uh, direct current cardioversion, or cause hospitalization and private hospitalization during follow up, uh, but uh, quality of life uh, was uh, comparable between the two groups. And uh, here the cardio balloon regimens uh, versus contact force uh, follow up by uh, ILR. Can, so a question, can we follow up patients by implantable uh, loop recorder? to check AF recurrence. This is very important because uh, many patients have like, silent AF. They had the proximity of AF, but they are not uh, totally aware. So um, uh, trials that uh, depend on Holter or symptomatic, um, uh, uh, sim symptomatic uh, um, of symptoms sometimes miss uh, the occurrence of AF. So um, uh, it was published, uh, published in circulation by um, by Andrad in uh, 20, uh, Italy in 2019, cryo balloon or radio frequency ablation for atrial fibrillation assessed by continuous monitoring by, uh, by uh, the plot uh, group recorder. And uh, here, uh, uh, the, there was three arms, the contact force radio frequency, this uh, 115, the cryo uh, balloon four minutes, that's like our protocol, it was 115, and the cryo two minutes only, 116. And uh, here, um, it was, again, paroxysmal atrial fibrillation and um, left atrial volume and left atrial size was, was uh, the left atrial size, 37 plus minus, uh, ejection fraction 60, so it's the uh, type of patient we select for cryo. And uh, these uh, th uh, three arms were randomized to compare uh, between uh, uh, the contact force RF and both protocols for cryo. And uh, here's the procedure characteristics uh, were revealed at uh, sh showing the procedure uh, for a cryo is less than uh, uh, RF uh, ablation, and the fluoroscopy is higher again in cryo. Uh, here's a couple of my curves again, uh, this, uh, describe uh, the uh, uh, freedom of AF. And uh, as here, these two, three uh, figures. The first figure shows a single uh, procedure, any occurrence of atrial arrhythmias. Uh, 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 even it is uh, not symptomatic. So this is the ILR recording. And here you, you, you observe uh, at one year, the 12 months, uh, that uh, 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 yeah, the percentages here is less than what we use to tell patients like 60% and 70% uh, because it is it depends on uh, uh, the continuous monitoring as thus it detects the silent AF. Uh, and, and this compares with, uh, uh, we here depend on only the symptomatic, the, the, the documented patient symptoms. And here we see the, again the figures that we, uh, we, we are used to. So this is the difference between uh, I think this is a silent AF, uh, uh, which m makes a uh, difference between these two graphs. And uh, here is uh, uh, multiple procedures, like redo procedures. This is, again, uh, the patient who got AF they don't redo, and they improve the percentage to uh, 60%. Uh, and this uh, describes the reduction of F burden uh, after, um, after ablation. Uh, and here's the complications again uh, were uh, comparable uh, and mainly um, uh, here's uh, the, uh, a perforation for the esophagus located late in the uh, RF group and this is important to consider the F ablation so we have to follow up patients and uh, give him contact numbers for the arrhythmia nurse or the follow up of the hospital to uh, check any symptoms and deal with it uh, like fever like uh, um, um, uh, uh, any any symptoms because for uh, delayed complications for ablation. And here, uh, this study was co called the circa dose. It demonstrated that PVI performed by cryo balloon ablation uh, or by contact force uh, ablation, uh, is comparable freedom for recurrent arrhythmias as assessed by continuous uh, cardiac risk monitoring. Um, uh, and the last point, this cryo, cryo uh, ablation for persistent atrial fibrillation, which was study done by Bovida in 2018, published in Jack Health Electric Physiology, uh, titled Single Procedure Outcomes and Quality of Life Improvement, 12 month post cryo balloon ablation in persistent atrial fibrillation. Here, 
uh, he enrolled um, uh, one thirty patients, and uh, and uh, the analysis occurred on uh, conducted was uh, on one hundred and one patients. Uh, here's the baseline characteristics, the uh, persistent... Yeah, Omar, عشان الوقت بتاع الزوم هيخلص أو يعني قرب يخلص. يا ريت نستخدم. خلاص دي آخر حاجة بس خلاص. خش على الكونكلوجن بتاعها على طول. خلاص. طيب ماشي شكرا.